Hello, what's up everybody, Andre here with another PowerPoint tutorial. This lesson will be all about making a cool logo intro animation for YouTube. This is a very popular topic, people are asking about it, a lot of clients are asking for unique animations for their logo. So today I want to show you my workflow of making such an animation. Also stay tuned to the end of the video because I will have a special bonus for you. So let's preview now the effect we are going to create. Alright, this is exactly it. Well, nothing too fancy, nothing too extensive, but you also don't want to spend 3 days on making it. It's just about right for a simple logo review. So let's imagine our client is tabletop company. That's just a sample logo I made of an icon and some text. And delete everything in PowerPoint and let us start working. I go to view and I open up guides to see where the middle is. I also help myself by going to the drawing tools, pressing align, align center and align middle. Now I have my logo in the middle and that's my working canvas. I only want to reveal this logo in a cool, simple, clean way. All right, let's get started. The first step will be to create boxes on the left and on the right side because they will cover up the boxes animating into the logo. Let's head over to insert, shapes, and insert two big shapes on the left and right side. They should end approximately near the logo. This is fine. I copy it over to the right side. And I think that's okay. Well, it could be a bit closer on the right side. I select both boxes and that's just a habit, but you should also do it. Always press no outline because an outline creates unnecessary pixels on the borders. Ok, we can now continue and start building up the presentation. The entire trick here will be to make those boxes white, so they will cover up the background and cover up the incoming boxes. Now I will leave them blue, so they will be better visible, and I go to insert and start inserting the shapes. Let's make a nice rectangle, for example this long, and it should end where the box ends. Of course, let's go now to shape fill and make it black as my desired color for this animation. The entire idea for this intro is so the boxes fly and they reveal the logo. So I need to make sure that it will cover up the logo. Maybe I place it in the middle. I copy it over three times, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy it over. I see a blue border has appeared so I select the two new ones, I once again click on shape outline, we already have the no outline selected, and we are halfway through. Three boxes are ready, I only need two more, I copy them over, I set them on the right side, so it will be easier for me to visualize. And now I begin to name all objects because the place is getting a bit crowded. Please head over to home select and open up the selection pane. As you can notice we have only rectangles and I wouldn't know which rectangle represents which one here on the screen so let's start naming them. First the two cover up boxes let's name them left guard and right guard. This doesn't really matter it's only for fun. Okay the first rectangle rect1 and rect Five. I should name them left and right, but for now that's okay. I select those rectangles. Now once again by pressing the shift key and clicking on the rectangles, I can move them to the side so they will be covered up by the box. I do the same for the right ones. I press shift to select both and by holding shift I move them to the right. Now if I would start to animate them, it would be just a little bit too boring. So I will go one step ahead and I will select all three of them again, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and I duplicate them. I position them on the left side, so they are right behind as a tail. Of course you have to always go to drawing tools, no outline, and they will be white. So I want the black stripes to go through the logo, 
but they shouldn't reveal the logo completely. I want the white stripes to fly behind them and this will create just a bit more of motion into the entire design. So I will go to shape fill for now, so I will see them better. I will select a red color, so I won't have any trouble seeing them. I copy them over here to the right side. Now it isn't very perfect, but I delete the bottom one. You can zoom in by pressing either the plus sign or by holding the left control and scrolling your mouse. I make them a little bit shorter. Maybe to just have some fun in the animation, I make this a bit longer and this one also. <sighs> PowerPoint is giving me a hard time now. I could also delay the animations, but let's make it a, just a bit longer so it looks just a bit more interesting. And the same on the right side. They are definitely too long. I make this one pretty short and this maybe going close here. All right. I think we are prepared to animate the entire thing. Last step in the design process we need to do is to quickly group them together. Select the first ones, right click on them, group, group. Do this for all the objects which are laying together. Once you do the grouping, you see in the selection pane groups have appeared and you should rename them now. I will start, this will be the right second, the next one will be the right first and now the left ones. It took me a bit longer than I anticipated, so let's move it and start the animation. Hit the animation tab and open up the animation pane. The animation pane is a bit big, the selection pane also, I make both of them smaller since we have the namings very narrow and I can start the animation. I select all three objects, well easier said than done, I select them like that, I go to animations and I use lines. What you want to do is to use effect options and move them to the right. Where well, the motion is already okay, but I see a small error here. This one has of course an outline. Okay, it's proper now. And what you need to do with the animation pane opened, you need to select those animation by holding the shift key so the entire animation flies out at least until this point, until it's not visible. I do this for all three animations and you don't have to be precise. If you want to have some interesting motion here, you can of course do this a bit differently, but I will be kind of precise here and I follow up with the right side. I select the right side, I click on the animations, lines, effect options and this time left. So it goes from left to the inside. I click on the red arrow, so I select only the animation and it shows me where the actual animation will end. Well, of course I need to move it much, much farther. Okay, second one, move it to the side. I missed it just a bit. Okay, the essentials are ready. Go to the right side, select all animations and hit with previous. So they all start simultaneously. Once we are done with that, we can finally preview the animation. Wow, that's super, super boring. Let's start finally to change it up a bit. I select both of these and I make them, of course, white. They should cover up, of course, all those animations. So you need to hit bring forward and bring to front. What this does, it makes it first in the selection pane. Well, now the animation should look just a little bit prettier. Well, it goes in the right direction. Now you have to work on the timings. I select the first one and now it's easy to animate because I see L1, L2, L3. Go to animations and just delay each animation and see how it looks. I want to kind of zip together all the animations. So first, second, third and from the bottom the same. This one should go first, the last one. So the last one stays here. Maybe I delay it just a bit and the right first should be delayed a bit more. I can work on the length, maybe make it a bit more interesting by editing the ends. And now let's see what motion do we have here. And as you see, this already has add up some motion into the design and I can now move forward 
select the objects and finally make them white. We are close to be complete with this animation, so let's continue with this. Alright, everything is white now and I can preview the animation once again. Well, very nice. Only, the only problem is that the logo is instantly visible. I don't want this to happen, so I click on the logo, I go to animations and I press a simple fade. I hit with previous, the logo can stay here, but I want to delay its appearance by maybe one second or 125, it all depends on the animation. Now I have to preview it a few times so I know what I'm actually doing. Well, much, much better. The logo doesn't appear instantly, now it gets the kind of motion feeling into the design. And I think I'm gonna stick with it. That's okay, now we only have to animate the text flying in from the right side. That will be much simpler. I go to insert, text box, I insert the text box and I just write down your website name. I press on the box, I center it, I position it, that's the end result. You only need to make sure that this box later on will cover the text. So the text could be even here, but that's fine. I'll leave it there. I go once again to animations, add animation, lines. You could also make the flying animation, but this doesn't really matter. Let's try the flying animation and let's make it fly in from left. Oh, sorry, of course, from right. Now I take the animation, it should end here. I click with previous, I delay it a bit and I will see how this looks in a moment. What I can also enhance this animation with, I can double click on it, go to effect and make a nice bounce end effect. I know that in Microsoft Office 2011 for Mac, this option doesn't exist, so we would need to click add animation and add another animation. But if you have PowerPoint 2013, the bounce end animation works and it looks very nice. You could also do a bit of smooth end and start. Well, it resets the bounce, that's, that's a bit messy. You don't have to be a precise here. I just click OK. Preview the animation. Very nice. It looks really nice. It gets a nice motion and once it's there, it bounces a little bit. I only need to make sure that this box is the first, just as before. I copy over the text layer one time to prepare a tagline. Ok, the font is changed, the text box is under it. Now I have the animations. Go to animations, delay it a bit so it adds a bit of motion and preview the effect. Where they come in a bit too fast. So what you can do, you can simply extend the duration of the animation. The very, very last thing you need to do is to select all three layers, the logo, text box and text box, go to add animation and add a little bit motion to it with a grow shrink animation. So once they appear, they will begin to grow and shrink. I click start with previews. I move it here to the logo and this animation will end up the entire effect. So I move it along so it will end to 6.5 seconds, that's okay. I select those two animations. I delay them by quite an amount, so once they appear, they can start to grow, 6.5, and that's it. Double click on it, go to effect, and it can't be as big. It should be only a few percent. So I will, for example, give it 108% for this and the text just a tiny bit. It, it's enough if you do 103% or 105. It really all depends what you want to achieve and how this actually looks. I changed everything. Let's preview the effect of the finished animation. Hit play from and perfect. It animates in and it starts moving towards you. Final step. If you want to fade in the animation, go to transitions, make it maybe half a second. That's enough. 
I click here so it ends after 0 seconds, so once the animations are done, I click a new slide, I delete everything, I color it to black, I go to transitions, once again fade, half a second and after 0 seconds. What this does, once you export this entire animation into video, it will play for 6.5 seconds, because this is how long the animations are, and it will have half a second of a fade and half a second of a fade here. So the entire animation takes about 7.5 seconds to play. Well, that was extensive, but this is my normal workflow when I prepare such animations. I first work with some objects, I try to animate them, and on the end I make some fade in, fade out, transitions, and basically this is how you can animate a logo in PowerPoint. If you want to add some music in the background, that's also no problem, just take a music file. I have here a sample music file from freesound.org, it's OGG, but since PowerPoint is so powerful, it can upgrade it to be playable, and once it's in the presentation, hit here on the top playback and choose play in background. I also recommend deselecting loop until stopped, so if it's a short sound like this one, it won't play two times. I have the sound here, I only would have to go to animations because a sound is now a simple animation and I should delay it a bit. Let's hit preview. Well, it could be delayed a bit more, but basically it's alright like that. I really hope you did enjoy this tutorial and learned much new PowerPoint tricks. Just recently I also released an online course on making logo intro animations in PowerPoint, where I make two more interesting projects in PowerPoint of logo intros and I would like to invite you to be a part of it. I have a special discount link only for the YouTube viewers here for $9 to enroll in this course. I think it's a great opportunity because as you see, making those animations in PowerPoint can be exciting and it's really interesting and easy to edit afterwards. If you do like the style I teach and would like to see more of such tutorials in the future, please help me grow by subscribing to this channel or enrolling in this course. My name is Andrzej Pach and this was a logo intro tutorial in PowerPoint. I'll see you guys next time.